Welcome back to the Matt Yasa channel. I was twisting up some beautiful wigwag plum bobs in my last video. I was using some pre-pulled tubing that I bought, and so I figured I would go into the steps to make your own line tubing for wigwag practice. This idea kind of comes from a Facebook post. Someone was trying to figure out how to turn an aquarium pump into a vacuum pump. There was a certain model of aquarium pump that if you opened it up and turned around the insides, you could turn it into a little vacuum. And so I wasn't sure which one that was, but I gave them a couple different ideas to get the job done. And this was the simplest but most straightforward one that I'm doing right now. It's always good to double check your own advice, so I'm going to try this myself. I'm creating what they call in physics a closed system and putting the air pump inside of it. The tubes will lead outside of the system, so as the air pump begins to pump air out of the box, it will create a negative pressure. So even though the closed system won't allow the transfer of matter, it will still allow the transfer of energy. Light, sound, and heat can still radiate through the medium. It's not to be confused with the isolated system, which is isolated from everything. In the last tube, I'll connect to the box itself, and it'll be the vacuum tube. And just like that, we've turned this air pump into a vacuum pump. Pop the lid on and use some of that high-tech adhesive duct tape. That should help seal up our closed system, helping us get better negative pressure. So I set up this simple test of just blowing into a Ziploc bag and sealing the tube inside. It's looking like it's working. The process is kind of simple. I didn't really expect much to go wrong. However, it's going a bit slower than I expected. I think I kind of overestimated the power of this pump. And so one of the other ways I mentioned was to possibly open the pump up and reverse the polarity to the motor. But I'm not even sure if that'll work. Let's check this out. So if we look here, we have the motor on the left, this rubber plunger looking thing on the right, and with nothing really connected between them, I'm kind of surprised to see that. I'm going to have to turn it on to see how this thing works. Oh, this is cool. The uh, square thing in the middle is actually a magnet. And the motor itself works on magnetism, so as it's turned on and begins to rotate inside, it pushes the middle magnet back and forth, which activates the plunger. That's very ingenious. And I really don't recommend you try this at home. House current is very dangerous. You really have to know what you're doing. But basically to reverse the polarity of the motor, I'm just going to swap the wires around. It'll send the electricity or the current into the motor backwards, causing the motor to run backwards. And now is that going to run the plunger backwards? I'm kind of having my doubts looking at it, but we'll, we'll find out. I'm going to wrap the wires up in some electrical tape before I plug it in. If they make contact, that could definitely cause a fire. And with a simple test here, it seems like it's still pumping air. It looks like reversing the motor doesn't work, or at least on this one. I kind of imagined it had fan blades or something inside, but this is a little bit different than I expected. So I'll reverse the wires one more time and double check just in case I mixed it up the first time I did it. And no, it still is pumping air. For the next step, I'm going to put this hollow swivel piece onto my blow tube attachment and then put this onto a blow tube. The swivel piece will easily allow me to rotate the blow tube while it's connected to the vacuum pump. And then these flexible latex hoses are very popular to attach to your blow tubes. It bends very easy, allowing a nice range of movement while you're working. And instead of the vacuum, you can also use this to puff into the glass to blow it out. Even though I've never really got used to using the blow hose myself, I definitely recommend it. It makes it a little bit easier than having to bring the blow tube to your mouth to puff into the glass, but you also get a little bit more control. Due to thermal expansion, the air inside the vessel is always wanting to escape or re-enter. So you can have a little bit more control over that process in the long run with the blow hose. 
All right, so it's definitely working, and even though it's running a little bit slow, we won't have to remove that much air during the vac stack process. But just in case it doesn't work in the next video, I have my plan B here, a two horsepower wet dry vac. I'll probably have to reduce the power a little bit, but I know this one will definitely work. But we'll have to put it to the test in the next video. So thank you for watching the Matt Yasa channel, and always stay melty.